Hey, you looking for some secrets? I got them right here. I'm Mike Wazorek. I've got this podcast. It's called Chicago Real Estate Secrets. And I'm going to share those secrets with you. I'm going to have the top producers and other real estate innovators in our area. And they're going to tell you everything you need to know how to make that money. So tune in every week and check it out. All right, my friend. So I want to dive right into this with you. So um, I want to know for myself, uh, from your perspective, how'd you get into this crazy business and uh, why real estate out of all different areas of uh, any field you can go into, why real estate? So I got into the business because I really, someone just referred me to it. I started on the mortgage side and I was looking for a job and they, that, that was of course when uh, early 2000s, the market was on fire the real estate market was climbing. And as you know, Mike, we had a mutual friend that started a mortgage company. And so we also had a different mutual fund that said, you should go work there. And that's where you and I met. So I started the mortgage side, um, not really intentionally aiming to get into real estate, but it was something at the time that I needed to do, which was to get a career or just a, a path going in a certain direction. And that ended up sticking with it. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, I'm happy you did and happy we got a chance to meet. Um, so uh, one other thing that I, I know uh, very well about you and something that, you know, uh, I've also taken to uh, since knowing you is, is coaching and, and investing in yourself. So, yes. um, you know, how did you take that leap of faith into coaching and, uh, you know, knowing that it would be, you uh, you know, invaluable someday. How'd you take that leap of faith and how'd you, you know, select a coach? So it really was a leap of faith because I came across a YouTube video and it was a, a gentleman named Tom Ferry, uh, widely well known in the industry. <clears throat> At the time I saw a video and then he just, it was, I think it was for a book that he wrote called Life by Design. And uh, I'm an avid reader. Mm -hmm. So I was more interested in the book which was tailored towards real estate. I thought it'd be interesting. And then knowing that it was, um, that he was also a coach, which I never really heard of. I asked my wife about what she thought if I was to get a coach and she was in a different industry, the pharmaceutical industry. And she said, yeah, all the executives at my company have coaches. And so I had her, her support because as you know, getting into it, it's not, um, it's a big investment, right? It's a commitment. They usually want a long-term contract, um, probably I think six or 12 months minimum. Um, and so I did it and it wasn't necessarily the coaching at the time because at, the, at that time, I don't think I got into the right coaching environment. Okay. Um, but it was the people that I met going to the coaching events that helped me expand my mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, my mindset expanded dramatically for meeting other people and seeing what the possibilities were of the amount of business they were doing which is what made me stick to it. And then of course, from one coach to the next, to the next different coaching programs. Um, now I'm with a phenomenal coach and uh, I'll probably coach with him for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Well, hey, it's been honestly a pleasure to see you refine your craft over the years and your dedication to, you know, yourself and providing the, the service you do to your clients is just uh, inspiring. So uh, thank you for sharing you know, that as well. And uh, I, I'm, in, I'm interested, and I'm sure a lot of other people are too, uh, from that coaching, right? And that investment over the years, what type of return have you seen? And, and, and honestly, business and professionally, did you take, you know, some, some you know, positives out of it from your, uh, in your, your personal life as well? Yeah. So once you get into coaching, and if you get the right coach, you'll get someone who not only helps you with the business, but also every area of your life, right? In real estate, as you know, it tends to, it's not a nine to five job. So the, your days tend to go late. Um, I wake up very early and being married with having three kids, it doesn't always work well. So having a coach there to help you not only with your business, but also fine tuning the, how to speak to your wife, words that you use, when to spend time with the family, when to spend time at work. Um, because if you study the market, 
there's going to be times of the year where you have to, you know, for example, coming up, I know I'm going to be working from 7 a.m. to 7 at night for probably three months straight. Um, and then there's going to be a time where I'll probably work a few hours in the morning and then a few hours in the evening and my middle day is going to be a little bit slow. So understanding the time of the year, how to navigate through the season shifts and the market shifts, the market conditions is invaluable. Okay. And so that's helped me with my family because then knowing, knowing how to react to the market, then you can plan vacations, um, understand when you're going to be able to leave work early to spend time with the family. But one thing that I, I have done, which has been amazing and has helped me balance my personal life with my business life is to wake up extremely early and get a lot of the work done ahead of time. So I wake up at 2.30, get a lot of work done prior to my rest of my family waking up. That's allowed me to finish work at a certain time. So um, I want to say that I'm pretty much, I have the ability to have dinner with my family almost every night, wow. which, you know, is good. Uh, and then, I, but I do continue to work after dinner. So my wife and I have an agreement of which days I come home and have dinner and then don't go back to work. And then which days I come home, have dinner, and then I have to catch up with work. It's pretty powerful stuff right there is communication, right? I mean, that's, that's probably the, the, you know, the single most important attribute of anybody in their personal or professional lives and it sounds like and I read the article about you and your wife and how you work together I mean it speaks volumes to communication and uh, you know just knowing that you guys are working as a unit to accomplish something great so I say kudos to you and it's, it's something that everybody can uh, can learn from too so yeah and and the fact that we work together now has you know dramatically helped because now she understands my business more good instead of not in, sorry, I'm not sure if you might, let me just uh, turn it down. Instead of understanding um, or, or the lack of understanding of why I can't just finish working at five o'clock or six o'clock or why I can't be firm with my schedule, even though I can, I'm still working on behalf of others. So I have a commitment to the clients that we serve and there is a diligence that has to be accomplished. If someone wants to see a property at eight o'clock at night and if I'm, if I'm the one that has to show it, I got to show it. But at the end of the, re end of the day, these things have to be done. Whether I do it or one of the team members does it, um, it's all about the service that we provide in the communication. People deserve it, right? So if you're in this business, it's the commitment that you're making and it's a sacrifice, but it's rewarding. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that's actually a perfect segue. I mean, I know that you are you're a monster uh, um, with prospecting. You're 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 very very uh, um, you know tied to your calendar. You understand anybody would know where you're at in the day if they have access to your calendar and you can yeah. reference quickly. But you're generating a lot of of attention, a lot of business through videos, through you know just delivering value wherever you can. Um, and so you can't do it all by yourself, right? So I know you have a team around you. And a team uh, is, is, most people aspire to have a team and they're not really sure where to start, uh, but they know to, you know, kind of have coverage everywhere to, to be able to have a, a larger footprint that it's necessary. So if there's people out there that are looking to get a team started, where, mm -hmm. do, where, where do they start? Where, how do they go about that? <clears throat> so start small. You, you really don't need a big team. Even if you're, even if you want to be a, a $200 million a year producer, whether it's mortgage or real estate or anything mm -hmm. else, you don't need a big team, but you do need, you need, you do need to surround yourself with highly effective people, right? You could have a, I know people that have teams of 50 people and they're not doing the amount of business that you would think that a team of 50 people should do. I, and I know people who have a team of five people and I think they're ranked, you know, top, five people in, in the country. Um, one woman in particular, she's out of New York and I know she does over a billion dollars a year in business with five people. So it's, um, I always go by the, the military verbiage of for, force multipliers, right? Um, and of course, you're probably familiar with the first force multipliers. So it's the idea that in order to, so military has special ops and it's not an ops team of a hundred people. It's a small group, maybe four, five, six people 
but they send them in to take down a country with a military of 4,000 and they do it. So you need to have highly effective people and surround yourself with highly effective people. And I would say start with one person, mm -hmm. hire and continue to interview. And if that person doesn't work out, fire fast, hire slow, fire fast, hire slow. Once you get your first good person, then you go, then you go on to the next one. Absolutely. But you add them, you take your time, you add them slow because as much as this is a race, because it is, you don't want to say, I think it's, it's nonsense to say, oh, take your time and develop it. And time goes by so fast. If you take your time, your business is going to be, it's going to be time to retire by the time you build your team. So you really have to work fast to build a team, but you don't need a big team. You just need highly effective people. Right. So no, pretty much know what you want, have your vision down and then move quickly into finding those that have like mind. They're like, they're find like-minded individuals, if you will. Absolutely. And, and the key is you can't look for people to replace yourself because that's just not going to work. And I think people maybe have the wrong idea of what a team is. The team supports everything that, for me, the team supports everything that I do. Right. Some people are, as you know, some people are extensions of me. And so that helps. And some people have um, very specific tasks every day. Yeah. And, you, and we don't have two people overlapping on the same tasks. Um, that being said, it takes time. It's very hard to find good people. And, and that's where I think people give up because you're going to go through a lot of dirt to find a diamond. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to understand is that when you, when you have a team, it doesn't mean that team is going to be there forever. Right. So you, you have to keep on interviewing, keep on looking for good people and don't try and hire everybody. Just hire very specifically, you know, to fit your needs. I like that. And I've heard in the past and I think we've shared a conversation about this too, that you don't, hire people and then find the positions that you want them to fill. You understand what needs to be done that you might need more coverage on and then find somebody that fits, you know, your need, right? The roles that you need filled, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you have to have a specific reason to hire somebody mm -hmm. and if that person doesn't fit what you're looking for, you don't hire them. Right. I see a downfall of many people that do start teams and they just hire anybody because they want to add a body mm -hmm. to the group, right? So they're not hiring somebody specific. They're just hiring somebody. Make yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. If, if they can fog up a mirror, they'll hire them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, that. that doesn't work very well. So I, I do want to ask you one question um, uh, about your one thing. So, you know, the biggest driver per se, the, the one thing, I know you understand and have heard of the one thing, but what is the one thing, if everything else, if you could not do anything else, what is the one thing that you could do today and every day after that by way of doing it would make everything easier or not necessary to do at all, to drive business and to continue to accomplish what you want within your business for your team, your family, yourself? What's that one thing for you? <clears throat> So the one thing that I think is most important over anything, it's, it's actually maybe not an action, it's a mindset. And with all the shiny objects that are going around, the, the people that are trying to sell, sell leads, um, trying to set you up on listing appointments, I mean, it's, it's everywhere, right? Facebook ads, this, that, blah, blah, blah. It's the ability to keep things simple and streamline it. But the key is to keep it as simple as possible and know that, again, it's that one thing and just focus on that one thing and become better and better at it. Don't get, don't become good at one thing and then try and do five different things because that doesn't work, right? We have the basic principles. You keep it simple and then you become better at those basic principles instead of trying to do this or running over to Zillow or, you know, now, now you're running Facebook ads. This, the more simple that you can keep your business, and it goes against what our complex minds think, but the more simple you can keep your business, the more successful it's going to be. Absolutely. I love that answer too, by the way. I mean, so I, I think just to reiterate, the one thing for you is to control your mindset and control your focus on truly yes. doing the most important thing right now that leads you to the next most important thing. 
and always being intentional in what that is and how you've established it. Maybe even getting up at 2.30 before anybody else can influence you and get into that brain of yours, right? It all starts with your mind. Yep. So if you're, if you don't have, if you're not strengthened up here, then it's not, nothing else is really going to matter. You'll have some success, but as your business success improves, you have to improve up here. Right. This is so important. Right. Absolutely. And then, uh, so the one thing that you know to be true, is you're not. <laughs> uh, Dude, do you have, we have stragglers just walking into your office? Yeah. I don't know who that guy is. Call He's selling police. apples. Yeah. Call the, call the police. Call the police, he says. Oh, uh, so what, uh, this is, this is a fun question. All right. So what is the one thing that you know to be absolutely fact in your mind that no one else agrees with you on? <laughs> um, that there's no standard other than the standard that you set yourself. Oh, well, that's very good. So for example, my, my morning routine, people think, Oh, it's crazy. Why would you do that? But the reality is when I ask them what time they go to sleep and what time they wake up, we get the same amount of sleep. I'm getting five and a half to six hours of sleep. So is that person. But you can design anything that you want in your life to make it work for you. And it doesn't have to work for anybody else. And there's no set standard that somebody else is going to do. Um, the nine to five, the... Yeah, they do like very well. The eight hours of sleep. That as human beings, we're all different, right? We're individuals. So we have to find what works for us. And then it may not work for anybody else in this planet. But if it works for you and what you believe, that's all that matters. And that could be the one thing that nobody's gonna agree with me on, right? My beliefs may not be what you or anybody else in this planet yeah. agrees to, but if I know it works for me, it doesn't really matter. That's right. Yeah. Hey man, I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing uh, some insight on your, both your personal and professional life. And uh, I think a lot of people can take a lot of different good pieces from this. But I think the strongest one is it starts up top, right? You got to get the mind right and got to get Absolutely. conditioned there to endure what's coming at us every day and to filter through those things and find the one thing that's most important next to drive us to that next important thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I was going to, you know, leave this conversation yep. with some tips, I would say, remove your ego, keep your business very simple, work your ass off because mm -hmm. nobody's going to do it for you. Right. Even if you get a team, it doesn't matter. You got to work your ass off and build your mindset according to what you want to accomplish, not what another, you see another realtor doing that's successful mm -hmm. for them you have to do what's going to be successful for you in your own mind. So perhaps, Hey, we talked about this, perhaps write out a plan, a vision of what, where you want to be in X amount of years. And then you create that plan, the necessary steps to get there. But the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to other people, what they're doing, right? Cause that takes away your mindset. Yeah. You may feel defeated. Um, you start to, to lose confidence, but the, important thing is to only compare yourself to what you were yesterday. And as long as you're improving every single day, you know that you're going in the right direction, but improve upon yourself, nobody else. Yeah. It's powerful. Thank you. I'm sure a lot of people can take <clears throat> guidance from that. Be true to yourself. You're your worst critic and you can be your best cheerleader. Yeah. Yeah. And don't compare yourself to others and, and just keep things as simple as possible. You know, um, the more, the simpler you can make your business, the simpler you can communicate with other people, the stronger your business, the stronger your message, and the more successful it's going to be because you can streamline simplicity, but it's difficult when it's complexity. Absolutely. So, so Hale, if anybody wants to get in touch with you to maybe learn more about what you've been talking about today, um, heck, even, you know, just learn about the team, maybe coming on board or how they build their own team. Sure. Um, you know, how do they get in touch with you? Um, text me or email me. Uh, I'm, I have a difficult time answering my phone because I do have, as you mentioned, my calendar, my day is packed mm -hmm. and, um, it's broken down into, into small little increments. So I literally have small different times where I could take breaks, but that's really to go on to the next phase of my day. 
So text me 312-437-7799 or email me sohail at sohailrealestate.com. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And uh, we hope to have you back on again sometime soon. Hey, listen, for you, anything, because, you know, as you know, we're partners to a certain extent and uh, I'm grateful for you and everything that you contribute to, to, to my business. So that's another thing, right? Not only find good people for your team, because your team may not be the realtors around you. Your team is also your attorney, your mortgage lender, um, the title company. There's all these people that you can utilize that, that are part of your team. So surround yourself with a tight circle of highly effective people. Absolutely. And thank you for that as well. I appreciate it. And I'm totally grateful for the day-to-day -day interaction that we share. So again, thank you.